Well, it is now that time of the year again. It's time for the Humanist Report's annual award show where we crown our scumbag and MVP of the year and we also decide what is the most badass and WTF moment of the year. Now, the way that it works is I nominate four individuals or moments in each of these categories and then I allow my viewers to vote and ultimately decide who's the winner. Now, for the first, we have our badass moment of the year, and there were a lot of moments that I think qualify as badass, but I narrowed it down to four. And the first one, of course, is the one that stands out to me the most, and it is Bernie's moment at a debate where um, he said now a very famous line. Can you guarantee those union members that the benefits under Medicare for All will be as good as the benefits that their representatives, their union reps, fought hard to negotiate. Well, two things. They will be better because Medicare for All is comprehensive. It covers all health care needs for senior citizens. It will finally include dental care, hearing aids, and eyeglasses. But you don't know Second that. of all. You don't know that, Second Bernie. of all. We'll come I, to you in a second, I do know, and I wrote the damn bill. <laughs> Every time I watch that moment, I love Bernie Sanders even more. Um, it was a great moment. It was unscripted, but he capitalized on that moment. He printed stickers about that moment. I hope that you all uh, were able to pick this up. I believe he offered it to people who donated to him um, as little as a dollar, I think. I'm not sure. But it was a great moment. And certainly, even though there wasn't too much substance there, um, it was one of the most memorable moments of the debate, and it really stood out to a lot of people. Um, and I, I just, I love it, and it's clear that you all do too. Now, on top of that, the next nomination is Greta Thunberg's UN speech, where she essentially told the world, how dare you? And this was such a huge moment because it really put the climate change debate, if you will, into perspective. And, you know, it essentially made us all feel like shit because we're all looking to this child for inspiration when we should be the ones who are driving, you know, the conversation forward and actually taking action. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words, and yet I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering, people are dying, entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? The next nomination is really important because it came at a time when I think a lot of Bernie Sanders supporters were feeling incredibly demoralized. You know, he just had a heart attack. The media was trying to exploit that situation. Um, there were, you know, pictures that CNN released where they clearly upped the saturation to make it look like he was purple. It was just a really weird um, thing that they did. Um, you know, the media dwelled on the fact that he had a heart attack. Some accused him of not being transparent and disclosing that he had a heart attack immediately. It was a really frustrating situation. But after the first debate post heart attack, we learned that Bernie Sanders would be receiving perhaps the most important endorsements of this election cycle. Endorsements from members of the squad, AOC, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib. And it really came at the perfect moment when we really needed a pick-me-up, when we were feeling like, you know, our chances were diminishing. Um, this really is one of the most badass moments of the year, and this is my nomination. I'm one of the people that was inspired by the movement that the senator has built. There was an America that I dreamed about. There is an America that most people um, believe in. It is an ideal. It's not reality yet. And he started the work of organizing for that America. And that has inspired me to get involved and run myself to help others also organize for that America. I am endorsing Amo Bernie Sanders because he's not going to sell us out. He understands that it's not just about policies and about words, but it's going to be also about completely transforming the structures in place that is hurting American people. This is not just about running for president. 
This is about creating a mass movement of working class people. The first time I ever heard about Bernie Sanders was when I was a waitress in a greasy spoon diner type of restaurant in downtown Manhattan. And I had been working 12 hour days. I didn't have health insurance. I was being paid less than a living wage and I didn't think that I deserved any of those things. I thought that that's just how life was. The only reason that I thought running for office was even possible for me was because of his example, because he proved that you could run for office and not take big money. Now, on top of that, a really special moment, I think, that I had to nominate was the release of Lula da Silva. Now, we haven't talked much about Brazilian politics here on this channel, but for anyone who follows Michael Brooks or The Michael Brooks Show, if you're not, subscribe to him immediately. He has been covering this, and Lula isn't just an important leader because he would change the trajectory of Brazil, but he is someone who could possibly change the world along with Bernie Sanders. We on the left are not just running to change the United States. We want to change and ultimately save the world and solidarity with other left-wing socialist leaders, pro-worker leaders like Lula da Silva is incredibly important. So when he was released, that was a really, really important moment for the global progressive movement. Now, there were a lot of, um, you know, honorable mentions that I didn't nominate, but considered nominating, but ultimately chose these, you know, specific moments for, you know, just my own personal reasons and how I, you know, I, I felt that they were really important to me. But honorable mentions include David Koch's death, Tulsi Gabbard's takedown of Kamala Harris at one of the debates, AOC's numerous speeches, one of which was when she confronted a big pharma executive, and another was when she made a speech about climate change. There were so many moments that we can nominate for badass, but ultimately, I decided on these four, even though it was incredibly difficult to really narrow it down. With that being said, though, I passed it off to you, and I allowed you all to vote, and you made your voices loud and clear. So, on Patreon... With 74 total votes, Bernie Sanders' I Wrote the Damn Bill received 20%, Greta's How Dare You received 41%, the squad's endorsement of Bernie Sanders received 32%, and the release of Lula received 7%. Now, on YouTube, our audience voted, and with a total of 15,000 votes, Bernie's I Wrote the Bill received 59%, Greta's How Dare You speech received 23%, the squad's endorsement of Bernie Sanders received 10%, and the release of Lula da Silva received 8%. And on Twitter, with more than 900 votes, Bernie's I Wrote the Damn Bill received 44%, Greta's How Dare You speech received 14%, the squad's Bernie endorsement received 28%, and the release of Lula da Silva received 14%. Now, when you look at the total results across all three platforms, in fourth place, we have Lula da Silva's release. In third place, we have the squad's endorsement of Bernie Sanders, and it came down to Greta and Bernie Sanders, and just edging out the squad's endorsement is Greta's UN speech. And in first place, we have Bernie Sanders' I Wrote the Damn Bill moment. This is officially the Humanist Report's badass moment of 2019. And out of all of these four nominations, I think this is a great choice. I personally would have been fine with either of these, these choices winning, but, you know, nonetheless, I'm really enthusiastic about this choice, and I'm really glad that Bernie Sanders' I Wrote the Damn Bill moment happened, because it just, whenever I see that clip, it puts a smile on my face, even though I've seen it now like about a dozen times, two dozen times possibly. But here's what you all think. Kay Keen on Patreon writes, I started to vote for I Wrote the Damn Bill, but then remember that the squad's endorsement of Bernie brought tears to my eyes the day it happened, so I changed my mind. Ashley Hudson on Patreon writes, Lula's release 
hands down. Monica Range on Patreon writes, Many great choices again. However, as a former Swede, I'm proud as heck of Greta and her courage and spunk. Fly Girl on Twitter writes, Specifically, when AOC endorsed Bernie and that amazing rally in New York. Matthias Perea on YouTube writes, I love that Bernie's line is, I wrote the damn bill, while Biden's is, no malarkey. Even their catchphrases shows you who is the substantive one. Sam on YouTube writes, Lula getting out means so much for the future of Brazil. Those in power may kill one or two or a hundred roses, but they'll never stop the arrival of spring. Matt on YouTube writes, I love how grown men got so angry at a 16-year-old doing climate activism. And there you have it. Couldn't agree more with the sentiment expressed here. So, Bernie Sanders, I wrote the damn bill. Certainly a worthy, badass moment winner for 2019.